Hi everyone, my name is Elsa. I'm a visual designer and Adobe XD ambassador and today I am going to be showing you some of my favorite Adobe XD plugins. I've been wanting to do this video for a really long time just because I think there are a lot of awesome plugins available in XD. Some of them help simplify your work process, others are just really fun for creating cool elements um, and I just wanted to kind of highlight some of my personal favorites. So let's get started. So right now I've already opened my XD window and you can see here I've already opened up my plug plugins bar. You can access your plugins by clicking this icon here on the bottom left and then it'll open up your entire list of plugins that you've already downloaded into your XD platform. So we'll start with the first one that I wanted to highlight, Autoflow. Autoflow is a super awesome plugin. I actually initially downloaded it because I wanted to use it for creating user flow charts. Um, I, you know, sometimes manually creating those arrows and those lines is a bit tedious, at least for me. So I wanted something that would help simplify that process for me. But when I downloaded Autoflow, I also realized that they have a lot of other cool elements to it that kind of make them a pretty dope plugin to use. So for instance, they have wireframes. So they have a lot of different types of wireframes templates that you can use for your designs. And this is a really awesome way of essentially creating really quick wireframe concepts without having to design everything on your own. So really it's just as simple as, let's say I wanted a footer, click and drag, and it'll, after a short period of time, I have my footer. So it's just really simple, really straightforward. It has a huge database of wireframes as well. They're all separated into categories too. So if you wanted to search for a specific type of wireframe as well, you can. So super great aspect of Autoflow. However, let's move on to the user flow aspects, which is kind of what I downloaded it for in the first place. So Autoflow kind of lets you link your different shapes or your different elements in your user flow or really in any kind of flow chart you're creating by providing lines different kinds of lines that you might need. And they also provide different kinds of blocks as well that you might be working with. However, they also have a really cool feature called flow charts. And I'll simply demonstrate what it does as opposed to trying to describe it on my own. So if I drew this shape, this is one of my blocks. And let's say I drew another block and I wanna link these blocks. Instead of going to the user flow tab and getting a line and manually linking these two blocks, I can simply select both of them and Presto, <laughs> we have our a line linking both of those blocks together. And that's because we're on the flowchart tab. So the flowchart tab, so just to undo, essentially lets you set the stylistic aspects of the line that you're creating. So let's say I know I want my line to be five pixels. I want it to be black in color. Let's say I want the end terminal to have an arrow. And then you click the two blocks that you want to create that link between and it'll create it for you based on the presets that you've set. So super cool way to create flowcharts really quickly, really efficiently in XD. And also, as I mentioned before, if you're looking for a lot of wireframe templates to play around with, it has those as well. Autoflow, first on the list. Next up, we have another really cool plugin that I absolutely adore. Like, I, 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 don't, I can't even remember how I got this plugin or where I came across it, but I am thankful that I did because it has been so useful in so many different ways, more so than I was expecting. And this plugin is called Blobular. Blobular, Blobular, oh, I can be hard to pronounce after all. Blobular, to put it simply, is a plugin that lets you create random blob shapes. That's that's essentially it. <laughs> it. Seems just very simple and straightforward, but it's a really cool way of really creating this nice, unique blob type shapes without having to obviously do that on your own using the pen tool and it randomizes them for you. So can you really just re you can really iterate between a lot of different shapes until you get the kind that you want. But they also provide options and settings so you can customize the shape according to what you are inclined to want to see. So if I want to reduce the complexity, make it a bit rounder and more like an ellipse if i wanted to increase the complexity make it really unique there's also a unique tab as well that you can play around with um, if i wanted to play around also with the color typically i kind of just create the shape and then add it to xd and add the color from there but you can also play around with the color as well you can determine if you wanted to have a fill or a border 
lots of different settings that you can play with. And once you're satisfied, you simply just have to click the create blob button and it'll create that blob for you. It might shoot the blob a bit away from your artboard, but that's fine as well. You just kind of have to retrieve it and then add it to your artboard. So Blobular, super fun way of creating blob shapes in XD. Um, they also have a website, I believe, that you can also use. But if you're using XD a lot and want to have easy access to these shapes, definitely download the Blobular plugin. Next up, we have Color Inspo. Color Inspo is such a good tool for so many different use cases. I initially downloaded this plugin because I wanted access to color palettes. And I'll st let's start by talking about the color palettes. And then we'll kind of delve into a lot of the other use cases as well. So it provides a lot of different color palettes that you can explore. If you're kind of stuck on what colors do I want to use for my design and you want inspiration by looking at different palette combinations, then Color Inspo is a great way of kind of just browsing through different color palettes and seeing which ones you like. They have two options for how you can save the color palettes that you like. You can either immediately add them to your assets, which will be accessible here. So once they're added, you click this icon here to access your document assets and your colors will be here. Or alternatively, you can simply click this button to add them to your artboard. So let's say I really like this palette. I actually do really like this palette. It's giving me watermelon vibes. And just like that, your palette will be accessible in your artboard or you can drag it outside of your artboard, whatever works for you. So a super great way of just kind of browsing through different palette combinations. You can also browse through different hues as well. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh. All right, I actually thought I clicked it and I was wondering why <laughs> it was lagging. You can also browse through different hues as well. Um, you can individually copy colors if you hover over them. There's this tiny copy icon so you can copy it and save the hex code and then apply it to an element on your page. You can also browse um, between solid colors as well. So super simple way of kind of just playing around with a lot of different colors and kind of getting inspiration from existing palettes. However, how else can you use Color Inspo? Because it's not just about color palettes. There's a lot that this plugin does that makes it super useful for, I think, any designer. They have a contrast checker as well. So if you're creating something and you want to check that the contrast between two colors is high enough for it to be legible for essentially anyone, Color Inspo provides a way for you to check the contrast. So essentially, you can either... So if I ungrouped this palette and I wanted to check if this green writing would work on white. I'd simply just click the box and drag it to my white artboard and it'll check what if you had this shade of green writing on a white background? What would the contrast be like? Obviously you can see here fails all around. This is not, there's not enough contrast. So we know immediately that this is not gonna work. However, let's say I had this color, so I wanna try this one out. Simply drag it once again to my artboard, compare the green on the white background. This is a bit better. We have like one pass here, but as you can see, ratio is still really small and we still have a lot of fails. However, you don't only you don't only need to check it against your white artboard background. You can also check it against two different colors. So if I had this yellow and this green and the yellow is on top, so I click the yellow square and I click the green square. And as you can see here, the program reads, okay, the user is asking, what about yellow text on this green background? And you can see here, it's it still all fails. <laughs> so this is just a really f easy and fun way of kind of just making sure that the contrast of your elements, your text, and your colors, your backgrounds are all um, high enough for everyone to read. And because it has a live checker, so you don't have to constantly select your colors and then click a button, select your colors and click a button, it does it automatically for you. So I can play around with changing the shade of this green until I make sure that my contrast ratio is high enough. And you can see now it's all passes. So these two, oh, I'm actually not selecting the yellow. Almost all passes, a couple fails. So I might also want to go back and still readjust it to make sure that it has a high enough ratio. So super fun way of using color inspo um, and they have a lot of different features, like so many features. Unfortunately, I can't go through each one. Maybe I should make a separate video for that. But they have a lot of different ways that you can use the plugin, which is why I love using it. They provide brand colors. So if there's a specific brand you're designing for, they have the colors for you. They also have random color and gradients. So if you're just 
want access to random shades to flip through until you get one that you like they provide that feature for you both for solid colors and gradients which i personally think is awesome because i don't see a lot of gradient tools so color inspo just a really efficient and really awesome way to play around with colors in your design Next up, we have Lorem Ipsum. Lorem Ipsum, I'm sure all of you are familiar with that. That's kind of the default placeholder text that we always work with um, when we're just trying to fill in at text boxes with something while we're designing. And there is a specific Lorem Ipsum plugin that you can use in XD to simplify that process even more. So before I used to go on the Lorem Ipsum website and like obviously select the text that I wanted and populate it in my designs in XD, but this plugin simplifies that process for you entirely. Like you don't even have to do any work at all. So just to demonstrate, let's say I was had a text here it's calling testing for now and we're going to turn it into a text box. So let's say I had a text box of this size and I wanted to populate this entire text box with text. So as opposed to like a single line of text, I want to make sure that this entire box is populated with text. Lorem Ipsum does that for you with a single click of a button. So there are a couple of different options that you can work with. You, you can either go with the fill with placeholder text button, which provides a couple of different options that you can work with. So let's say there's a specific kind of placeholder text you wanna work with, not necessarily lorem ipsum, you can choose a different option. It also kind of gives you the option of how do you wanna end your text? with a period, with an ellipsis, with nothing at all, just have it, you know, end however. Um, do you want to trim the text area to fit inside the inserted text, you know, depending on what kind of line height that you're working with? Do you want to include line breaks? So it kind of has all those different options for you. If you don't want to play around with all those options, you're fine with whatever the default is. You can simply click Quick Lorem Ipsum and that will just immediately populate the text box area with placeholder text for you. So that's just kind of a really nifty way of populating different text areas in your designs without having to do too much work. So if I had a really large text area, you know, and I, I just kind of wanted to populate it really quickly, Quick Lorem Ipsum does it for you. If I want to adjust my settings a little bit, like I wanted to end with a period and I want to include line breaks, you know, it does that for you as well. So now we can see that it ends with a period. So Lorem Ipsum, super nifty way of playing around with placeholder text in your designs, just makes that process super simple for you so you don't have to go and manually retrieve placeholder text anymore. So final plugin that I wanted to highlight, there are so many that I wish I could talk about and maybe I have to make a sequel to this video to talk about five more plugins that I like. However, the final one that I really wanted to talk about is user profile and as you may even be aware of it. But user profile is just a really great way of filling in shapes in your designs with avatar faces. So we all know that typically when we're designing, occasionally we may have a sample or default avatar that we want to populate in certain areas. And it can be very tedious to have to go to Unsplash or Pexels or you know Adobe Stock or on any of these other image sites and find images, then load them onto your device and then drag them into your designs can be a lot of work. User profile is kind of just an easy way of doing it without having to do any work for yourself. So let's say I drew a couple of circles here. So let's say one, two, three. And I wanted each of these circles to be populated with user profile. So essentially avatars. I simply just have to select all of them. You can even see here that the plugin um, sidebar has changed a bit and you can insert a random photo. It gives you a couple of options to play with as well, you know, the size of the photo. But let's say I just wanna insert random photos into each of these shapes. Just I kind of have to wait a while for them to find the photos for you and done. You have your default user photo selected. So just a super nifty way of making sure that your shapes, the different shapes that you're working with in your designs have avatar faces without having to find those images on your own. Bonus, they do provide photo credits as well. I think that this is honestly the best thing because there are a lot of different image or avatar type plugins in XD. But why I like user profile particularly is that you do get the photo credits, which I think is really important to credit to the photographers of the images that you're using. So super convenient and nifty plugin as well that I use regularly.
So those are my five favorite plugins in XD. As you can see, there are a lot of different ways that plugins can make your design process quicker, faster, more fun, <laughs> and they're just more convenient all around. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and you learned a thing or two about plugins in XD. I might do a SQL video as well because I'm realizing, or maybe you've realized yourself, I have a lot of plugins and there are a lot that I want to talk about. Maybe I'll even do an in-depth video to focus on one particular plugin to really kind of go into detail on how you can use it, but we'll definitely see. But for now, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.